Good news guys, Voidlander goodness is coming to Fuji X gang and the very first native X mount Nocturne 35 1.2 is already here. When I saw the announcement news I got really excited and so did many others who know what Voidlander means. I decided to do a little initiation for people who don't really understand what the f*** is going on. I'll tell you what exactly Voidlander is and why you should be excited if you have a Fuji camera. So get some booze and snacks and let's dive into it. Yo, what up? Welcome back to yet another Aperture Valley episode. Today we're talking history and sh**, and honestly, it's been a while since I've made the previous history behind vid, so you can check the playlist in the link above. So why Voidlander is indeed a big deal for us, comparatively small group of modest Fuji users? Actually, Voidlander was founded back in 56. In f 1756, Carl, a century before Leica was founded. Sorry, Leica fans. You're gonna get more hits going further. There are not many companies worthy comparing to Voigtlander, history-wise. So like, hell of a long time ago in Austria, some dude, Johann Voigtlander, established a little company of his. It was when the world saw significant advancements in the practice of medicine, mathematics and physics. So obviously, Voigtlander company was involved in creating mathematical precision measuring instruments as well as optical instruments, since astronomy as a science was a hype. So it's safe to say that Voigtlander is one of, if not the oldest camera companies in the history of the world. Already plus one to Voigtlander's credibility, right? In 1840, Voigtlander's grandson Peter, or I guess Peter? Ah, whatever. Peter established company as a photographic leader just one year after the father of photography, Louis Daguerre, guess where is he from, introduced photography to the world. Based on his image processing technique, Voigtlander introduced the very first and all-metal brass camera a decade before Oscar Barnack was even born. This camera is now exhibited in the world's biggest science and tech museum in Munich. Same year, Voigtlander company introduces the fastest at the time and the very first portrait lens, Petzval 160mm f3.6, named after its creator, Josef Petzval. He, by the way, was a doctor of mathematics, and together with Peter Voigtlander's tech advices, the lens was mathematically calculated, designed and produced. By 1862, the company sold 60,000 copies of this famous glass. In 1898, Voigtlander company went public. Soon after, in 1900, a dude called Dr. Hans Harting created another fast lens, Helier. Helier was first produced with symmetric design and then it was updated with an asymmetric design in 1902. Later, Dynar and Collinear lenses were introduced. The later one was a symmetrical double anastigmat design with six elements in two groups. These lenses were very good, and Voigtlander even had an office in New York City marketing them to be used with Kodak cameras, which were better at the time. In 1923, the majority of shares were acquired by pharmaceutical giant Sharing AG. Since the company was growing strong, they rolled out a large-scale production in photographic division for Voigtlander in 1925. In 1929, the first medium-format camera was introduced, Voigtlander Bessa. By 1939, Voigtlander manufactured 2 million lenses. In just 15 years, the number would double to 4 million lenses, same year when Leica just introduced M3 and M mount. By 1950, Voigtlander introduces Ultron and Nocton lenses, with the last one being a 50mm f1.5, a 7 element in 5 groups design uh, with a splitted front element. It is truly one of the best known Voigtlander lenses. Same time, a dude called Dr. A.W. Tronier refined a Hillier lens with a new lanthan glass that eliminated the faults of old design. In addition, it was also world's first apochromatic lens, meaning color corrected for three instead of two spectral colors. But ironically, at the time the faults of Hillier lenses were interpreted as unique glass characteristics, so the new design was marketed separately as an apo lanthan. FYI, Leica makes first apochromatically corrected lens only 25 years later. In 1956, Sharing AG sold Voigtlander to Zeiss. I assume it's because of controversial drug, Primodos, created by Sharing AG to detect pregnancy but which led to disability in newborns. Oops. Starting from 1960s, they had to deal with that sh instead of caring about photography. In 1959, Voigtlander made the first in the world 35mm photography zoom lens Zoomar 36-82 f2.8. 
In 1965, they made the first 35mm compact with a built-in flash called Vitrona. In 1971, Voigtlander factory was unfortunately closed and, uh, together with Dyes, Voigtlander was acquired by Rolay. Soon after, in 1982, Rolay collapsed and sold the Voigtlander name to Plus Photo, which in turn resold it to Ring Photo in 1997. In 1999, partial rights and license was acquired by Casina, an established photography pioneer based in Japan. Casina had on mind a classic collection. They wanted to produce a range of high-quality lenses in M39 and Leica M mount, as well as rangefinder cameras. Voigtlander seemed to fit nicely into all the brand requirements for that. Not to mention that Voigtlander cameras and lenses have been of a great personal interest to Casina's president, Kobayashi Hirofumi. Casina Voigtlander is exactly what happens when German precision, knowledge and experience meets Japanese high-quality production and manufacturing standards. Casina Voigtlander cameras and lenses are what modern photographers know Voigtlander for. 35mm and medium format BASA camera bodies, as well as various lenses for M39, M42, Leica M, Nikon F and S mounts. Although modern Voigtlander lenses keep the old namings, they are not related to the old lens designs. Today, Voigtlander glass is categorized under five families of lenses. Nocturne represents ultra-fast lenses with speed from 0.95 to 1.5. Ultrons are the fast lenses with speed from 1.7 and 2. Color Scapar are slow lenses with speed from 2.5 to 3.5. Apo Lenthar are apochromatic lenses that have all three colors, that is RGB, corrected and have extremely low dispersion. And finally, Heliers have simple grouping of glass elements of lenses designed for portrait and landscape photography. So wrapping up, Voigtlander lenses are a great addition to third-party options for Fuji since besides being optically great, they are solidly built and have a great classic look to them. Following a Leica tradition of manual lenses only, they are simple and small while being of a great quality. Voigtlanders are the closest to Leica glass you can get and since most Leica lenses suck on digital and expensive as f Voigtlanders would be a hit on Fuji cameras. And looking at the first Nocturne 35 1.2, we can definitely see that they designed it specifically for APS-C, which is a plus. Once I was telling you in one of the episodes that fast lenses are really too heavy and bulky to own, but this one? This one might change the game. If you need speed. But I'm more excited about the future. I hope we'll see more Voigtlander lenses redesigned for APS-C, like their awesome ultra-wide 10, 12 and 15mm. Anyway, for now, all of it is just a dream and my psychiatrist advises me to live more in the present day, so I better stop photoshopping non-existent lenses on my X-Pro 3.